the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. True. It is my desire as a man of God and as a leader to see people excel all wise and in accordance to the prophetic word um, this year i really have been pressing to show us the ways of the spirit that have been allocated for the various results that we desire i only pray that by now we would have grown to a level in the spirit where we place value on these truths you see the thing about truth the bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth and then the bible speaking about wisdom says that those who seek me early there is timing to impact there is timing to acquisition of wisdom every time is not convenient there is a time lapse that when you allow to pass without your pressing into certain dimensions of the wisdom of god you will pay for it it will not come easy it will come at a very serious cost Praise the Lord. Second Peter chapter one and verse twelve. Shibaka subrakata. Second Peter chapter one and verse twelve. Let's read it together. One to read. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though ye know them and be established in the present truth. The apostle is speaking now. He's saying part of my apostolic assignment is that every once and again, I, as a system of mentorship, remind you of the truths that you probably may have known. Some may be on their way understanding it. Some would have held it to a measure. But he said, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. It was Dr. Mike Murdoch that said, repetition is what creates persuasion. That means the more a thought and a truthful information is repeated, eventually your mind will embrace it as true and your life will show the results. Are we together? So um, I will title this, keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom you can put in bracket revision series the keys of the kingdom it's a revision series this is part one next week we'll look at part two the goal is to bring to our understanding it's like a refresher course praise the lord this week and next week by the grace of god I'm going to be dealing with the matters of the kingdom, the factors, the laws of the spirit, the truths that we have so labored through the years to teach and continue to teach that are responsible for power, for grace, for relevance, for a life of meaning, impact, and so on and so forth. Are we together? The keys of the kingdom. A revision series matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 lord we receive understanding matthew 16 and verse 19 read with me is projected everyone inside and outside one to go and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven uh-huh and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loose in heaven let's look at amplified the king james version here does not do the kind of justice that we seek um, it doesn't give you the kind of expression that 
that will help you understand. Let's read it now and then I begin to teach. One, two, read. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. And whatsoever you bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose, declare lawful on earth, must be what is already loosed in heaven. Thank you, Father, for understanding. Let us grow. Let us rise. In the name of Jesus, let us become living wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is speaking here and he's making a very interesting statement. Please pay attention. Remember, I told us that Jesus raised disciples who would later become apostles through a system of discipleship that we called mentorship. And the way he started, very interesting, from Matthew chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, when he was done with his temptation, he departed in the power of the Spirit. Right from Matthew chapter 5 until he resurrected, every day was a Bible study session, every day was a prayer session, every day was a mentorship session. They were exact spiritual truth that he was teaching them. He was teaching them on the kingdom, reorganizing their understanding about various aspects of the kingdom life. He brought many prophecies to lamb light and began to shed light on them. He brought many perspectives, misrepresentations about the God of the Hebrews that they had known and began to correct them. Then he used parables, parables to explain what he called the mysteries of the kingdom. Are we together? And so when we get to the 16th chapter of Matthew, he's now talking about the keys. Now, theologically speaking, there is only one key to the kingdom. Everybody say to the kingdom. There is only one key to the kingdom. And that key happens to be the door himself. Jesus said it this way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh to the Father except by or through me so we know that there is only one key to the kingdom there are not many ways almost all of the founders of different religions around the world out of the three to five thousand religions we have currently and growing in the world all of the founders propose to be the keys of the kingdom that means they are the access point to enter into a certain dimension of life civilization consciousness or reality are we together we have several religions across the world with different founders purporting different facets of the revelation of god but jesus came and made a bold statement that he was and still remains the only authorized access so there is only one key to the kingdom the bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved do you know why i'm teaching you this look up please look up the time has come in the church where we must be biblically sound we must be theologically sound the context of our spiritual communication must be balanced must be intelligent must be theologically sound you must be able to make full proof of your ministry defending the faith by understanding what you believe not just believing blindly are we together the days that we live in would require conviction conviction that comes not only through encounters but through understanding so i'm taking our time to teach you this because many believers are not mentored to understand god the average believer understands different aspects of power glory here and there but the sequential growth this kingdom has an explanation you need to know the way the kingdom was built and how it operates are we together yes so this looks like very basic but it's amazing the level of failure you will command not knowing this there is only one key to the kingdom there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved are we together the bible says in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 8 to 10 
it says that um, the word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth even the word of faith that we preach it says that if thou shalt confess with thy heart the Lord Jesus thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead it says you shall be saved are we together yes then it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made that leads to salvation so this is the technology that God employed so when you follow that door who is Christ the Bible calls him the new and the living way he becomes the only access point if you have not passed through that door you are not saved are we together it doesn't matter how you are around church you are not saved Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said rabbi John 3 thou art a man we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him then in verse 3 Jesus is teaching now and he says verily verily I say unto you except a man be born again he's talking about being born again now he shall not see the kingdom of God are we together and then except a man be born of water verse 5 now and the spirit he shall not enter the kingdom so we know there is one key and only key to the kingdom but there when you get into the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom not a key the the basis for access that help us to function in this kingdom there are many the laws of the kingdom the methodologies of the kingdom you need access to just one key Jesus the son of the living God the new and living way but when you come into the kingdom listen carefully you need to know that there are keys of the kingdom say keys of the kingdom and the sequence is this watch this a believers come you stand here face me please my friend please come stand here face me no you stand here are we together my dear come now watch this they represent different levels this gentleman for instance is the one the bible calls a natural man everybody say natural man that means one who is alienated from the life of god he is not yet a partaker of the life of god through the new birth experience that we call salvation is someone learning you have to understand what i'm teaching you the first ministry that this man needs is not a preacher's ministry the first ministry that this man needs is the ministry that the bible calls the goodness of god listen very carefully the bible says it is the goodness of god that leads men to repentance so there is a dimension of the encounter with the goodness of god that this man needs to have and that dimension is sponsored by the holy spirit so the holy spirit is the one who can make this man even have the need see the need for jesus in his life john 16 jesus still in his mentorship session began to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the holy spirit jesus started by saying i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it listen carefully that when he the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth are we together he shall take of what is mine and shall give to you then the bible says that the holy spirit has a threefold ministry to the world the world of natural men he says he will convict you of three things number one of sin say sin number two of righteousness say righteousness number three of judgment are we together so it is the ministry of the holy spirit to bring this man to a point now he will need the cooperation of a preacher because the bible says how shall they hear except they be a preacher are we together are you understanding the methodology of the kingdom except they be a preacher so god depends on men to allow the ministry of the holy spirit 
to find expression now this gentleman is sitting in koinonia or any meeting and he hears the word of the lord coming and listen it is not any preaching that saves understand this it is not any preaching that saves there is an exact spiritual information that leads to the salvation new birth now all truth in the bible have a measure of light and liberty that they bring listen to me but there is an exact message that turns a sinner to become a righteous person are, are you following now this is a refresher course we are dealing with the things that many believers do not know that continues to make their life and their assignment within their environment ineffective now it is true that i can teach any message and raise an altar call but that even if it is in one minute there has to be a way of routing that altar call such that the content allocated to be captured for salvation is represented there are we together the gospel that saves is called the gospel of salvation everybody shout say the gospel of salvation now there are many gospels in the bible by many gospels we don't mean erroneous gospels the word gospel just means an announcement of glad tidings it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with jesus as it were it's just a proclamation of glad tidings the word gospel means good news are we together a proclamation of an information that gladdens the heart that's what is called gospel so there is the gospel of salvation and the gospel of salvation is a message everybody say a message the gospel of salvation is the revelation listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love a revelation of the father's love are we together manifested in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ and the object of that sacrifice is man first and then creation the death of jesus does not only affect men it affects creation are we together so the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son jesus to man first and then creation and then man's response everybody say response man's response to that gospel who had believed our report to that man the arm of the lord had been revealed are we together yes so when i hear the gospel what is the gospel for god so loved the world that he gave he proved his love for man by allowing jesus his son to come to the earth now watch this the assignment of jesus on earth was not to die death was simply a gateway to help him fulfill that assignment are we together jesus came to earth to fulfill a threefold assignment number one jesus came as a representation the image of the invisible god until jesus came they did not know god so they would they would accredit or credit both the things that were done by the devil fallen angels and god to the god of the hebrews until jesus came there was no bodily representation of the god of the heavens so jesus came as the image of the christ made manifest are we together the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as the glory of the father full of grace and truth and the bible calls him the image of the invisible god the invisible god that hitherto we only heard about and a few people had certain encounters of different dimensions of him that god is now personified in the christ so you can look at jesus to know who god is jesus came as the will the thoughts of god the word word of god is the word logos the thoughts the intent of a man seeking out for expression are we following tonight this is basic salvation that is not basic at all it is the strengthener of your christian faith you have to know how you came into this life so jesus came to reveal to men the image 
of the invisible God as a commitment and a desire to help men know God number two Jesus came as an agent of reconciliation the Bible calls him the mediator of the new covenant what does that mean the bridge like two aggrieved parties the word mediator is a legal term it's a system of reconciliation that means two aggrieved parties or at least an aggrieved party that has broken relationship and fellowship so Jesus came as the bridge but in order to fulfill that ministry as savior and mediator he needed to pass through the legal system of the spirit and there are ordinances that have been in the realm of the spirit that he had to subscribe to ordinance number one the soul that seen it it shall die it's a law that any soul that sins the penalty is death are we together yes ordinance number two without the shedding of blood i'm doing a quick review so that we'll just pass this area without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins no atonement no remission are we together so jesus needed to satisfy that legal term number three that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone so only death leads to resurrection anything that is alive in itself cannot resurrect it will have to die and then resurrect with another life are we together now so jesus being the mediator watch this number one he came as a manifestation of the image of the invisible god number two he came as the mediator of the new covenant to fulfill that ministry of reconciliation drawing men connecting men to god and he needed to route it through abraham and by so doing fulfill the legal claims of justice the third reason why jesus came was to perform his high priestly ministry you have to understand this that he is a priest after the order of melchizedek that even in resurrection he had to take his blood the blood of the eternal sacrifice and he went before the tabernacle in heaven that was adumbrated by that that was on earth and he poured his blood upon that tabernacle so that once and for all salvation became real to men are we together yes so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus to the end that when you hear that gospel and believe that it is true that jesus has satisfied the legal claims of justice that now standing before the throne you stand guiltless with the righteousness that is equal to that of the Christ are we together not like that of the Christ when you receive that report the Bible says immediately two things happen to you number one the first thing that happens to you when you declare Jesus as Savior and Lord is that there is a translation spiritually speaking from the domain the kingdom of darkness that means a domain that is under the legal authorization of satan into the kingdom of his dear son now follow me very carefully are we together and then the bible says that when there is that translation the second thing that happens and all these things happen concurrently is that by believing it is credited to you for righteousness like faithful abraham i hope you know the first person to hear the gospel was abraham our father the gospel was preached to abraham in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed abraham believed god and it was credited to him and that formula of abraham is what was given to the saints to hear the report of the lord and to believe by faith then it is credited to us as righteousness people like Kenyon define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of condemnation and without a sense of inferiority this is what he calls righteousness I will want to add that more than that righteousness is the manifestation of the nature of the Christ in a man 
is more than just an act the manifestation of the nature of Christ in a man is called righteousness righteousness is first who you are by reason of your believing the report of the Lord now number three we are given the Holy Spirit according to Galatians chapter 3 Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord the Bible says being made a cause for us for it is written in the law of Moses that cost is every man that hangs upon the tree why that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles what is the blessing of Abraham I've taught it here justification by faith the blessing of Abraham is not a pronouncement no there are blessings of Abraham there is the blessing and there is the blessing of Abraham three of them are not the same the blessing of Abraham is the justification that comes by faith the blessings of Abraham are the speakings that came upon Abraham as an inheritance by God that we can route through the promise the blessing is the Holy Spirit are we together so the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham justification by faith might come upon the Gentiles to give us now access to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith so we receive the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the representation of the life of God he is the one we call Zoe now listen very carefully the word eternal life is not something the Holy Spirit brings it is his presence in us the Holy Spirit does not bring eternal life the Holy Spirit is the life of God he is what we call Zoe he is what we call the blessing are we together now watch this this man let me come back to our, our terms now as we used this man has been convicted of the Holy Spirit and a preacher makes what we know to be an altar call this gentleman comes out receives the life of God acknowledges Christ as his Savior and Lord and according to the authority of Scripture the Bible says this man is saved because he believed in his heart unto righteousness and he confessed with his mouth the Lordship of Christ step one everybody says step one this is not the end of the journey he has now entered into the kingdom he has had one key the key to the kingdom Jesus Christ now that he's in the kingdom watch this this man can remain unfruitful forever right now in the kingdom he's no longer a natural man but he's also not a spiritual man the Bible calls them carnal men the word carnal means sensual they have not grown to the level now where their impulses are aligned to the word and the spirit he's not a natural man but he's not yet a spiritual man in experience are we together now many believers can remain at this level forever and be in church for 10 years and in honor to your longevity in church you can be called a deacon from a deacon you move to a pastor and then to whatever now humanly speaking you are making advancement but spiritually speaking you are still here are we together now watch this it is for this man that Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 was given that he gave unto some apostles listen now the fourfold or fivefold as we call it is about to be introduced now he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers why to do the work of the ministry i mean for the perfecting or the equipping the maturing it is called of the saints so that this man now matured will do the work of the ministry are we together so the holy spirit is the next person to be introduced to this man because the word of god without the ministry of the holy spirit will turn this man to a religious man he will receive the knowledge that puffs up ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth the bible says for from such depart are you following me tonight so this gentleman gets born again the the sequence of spiritual growth is that for his health look up please for this man's health and his speed in growth it is important to be planted 
within a community of believers because being planted within the community of believers now will afford him the opportunity to be discipled an interesting word i'm introducing now say discipleship please shout it say discipleship it's a word that has been abused by religious um religious perceptions most of what we call discipleship in the body of christ is conformity to the doctrines and the patterns of a denomination but god's idea of discipleship is not conformity just to the patterns and the doctrines of a denomination or conformity to the central thought agreed upon by a body of religious people that's what most times we call discipleship is the reason why after many years of mentorship the people don't look like christ they look like the error are you getting what i'm saying now yes the bible says looking up to jesus the author and the finisher of our faith he started it he should end it so this gentleman is planted in a ministry like koinonia are we together now he has an assignment his assignment is to remain open and to know that now he must grow that growth is a possibility in the kingdom luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men this guy is saved but he needs to grow if he does not grow then galatians chapter 4 becomes his tragedy are we together it says this i say then an heir for as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave although he be lord of all but that he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed so an heir provided he remains a child bankrupt of the knowledge that provides growth that he does not differ from a slave this gentleman's next port of call is to grow everybody say growth the growth is threefold number one the first dimension of growth for this gentleman is to be brought to a point where the foundational pillars the foundational pillars of the christian faith are taught him i'm showing you how this person will become a powerful man tomorrow the foundational pillars the bible begins to tell us in in hebrews chapter 6 that leaving these basic doctrines let us move further to more superior things paraphrasing and he said the doctrine of baptism and of this and of that and of that there are basic foundational pillars of the christian faith please look up if this guy receives the best of mentorship he should be introduced number one to the value of the word of god in the life of the believer this is key it's not something he should learn later he should learn that in this kingdom the boundaries of god's commitment to us is scripture he must learn that the primary way of knowing god is scripture all scripture were inspired by the holy ghost profitable for reproof for doctrine for correction that the man of god may be mature fruitful in every good work are we together so this man must be brought to a point where he understands the value of the word of god number two this man must be brought to a point where he understands the foundational value of the priesthood ministry of the believer the priesthood ministry is not something he should learn when he's ordained into ministry by priesthood he should be able to understand the power of prayer as a system that transforms you and as a system that helps you to legislate in this kingdom when this man is not taught prayer early it will affect him are you seeing the sequence of growth number three this man must be taught the value of corporate fellowship and community life as a system for preserving kingdom values i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity are we together 
it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bed to his skirt his garment he said there the Lord had commanded the blessing this man must be introduced to the foundation of corporate fellowship number four this man must be introduced to an understanding of his identity in Christ it matters for this man to know who he has now become in Christ the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 it says and if ye be Christ's then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise there are many things that the Bible calls the believer for instance it says behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God is a name he must know number two the Bible tells us that we have been raised up together with Christ are we together he must understand that fact number three he must know now that he has become a partaker of the spirit whereby we cry Abba father that this man has access to God according to Hebrews he says let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help in time of need this man must know he has access to the wisdom of the spirit now he has access to fellowship he should understand this as a foundational pillar of his spiritual growth he must see the necessity of the fivefold ministry in his life as gifts given to the body to help mature him the next thing is this man must understand that he has a purpose and a destiny in Christ it's a foundational understanding it's not something he should have when he graduates from school or gets married no the Bible talks about believers being predestined according to his eternal counsel he must know that he was born for a reason are we together when this gentleman you are, this guy is stooping down to respect me his back will pain him oh stand, stand straight eh? he respects me and he's leaning like this god bless you for your honor that's how the world will bow before you eh? now watch this but but you can you can stand you have you have tried let's 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 be fair on the gentleman praise the lord now do you know that when this guy now understands these things they are very strong pillars now he can begin to move to the deeper matters of the kingdom are we together what we call the mysteries of the kingdom he will now begin to understand the methodologies the ways of god he now begins to understand the keys of the kingdom he now begins to understand the mysteries that connect to the results that he desires already remember that the foundation of his life is god remember that he knows who he is in christ because this man is about to go through challenges somewhere in his life and if he's not told who he is in christ and the value and the power of prayer and he does not have a system of mentorship that will tell him he's all right this guy will be discouraged soon when you get born again there's usually a bonus for you whether you pray or not things just work you are jumping is to motivate you are we together and you look at believers laboring and you are like ah, you mean this thing is this simple it's an encouragement so that whatever comes your way you will know your life is in his hands yes Do you know that this gentleman, having completed this realm, will now move to the next realm where he's mentored on the ways of God? Now, I begin to teach this guy on the principles of the kingdom. Here is where we begin to show him mysteries in the kingdom. That there is a mystery that connects longevity. There is a mystery that connects exemption. How favor works. How giving works. How the relationship with the Holy Spirit is built. How the anointing grows. The necessity for this. This guy continues to learn and learn them again while he grows. Now, 
this content is graduating this guy from a carnal man to become a spiritual man with proper mentorship he will get to a point where he becomes strong and mature his convictions are strong he's not only believing because a pastor said a prophet said an apostle said he has come into an a, a conviction about god watch this when he gets to this level the next assignment is for him to now be taught the principles that make him a battle axe thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war that you are not only in the spirit to grow alone are we together now that is time for you to mature and now become useful this is where you need to now understand the principles of kingdom advance what it means to become an ambassador what it means to be mightily used by god it is at this point this man begins to learn the laws of influence this man begins to understand the deeper dynamics of the power of the holy spirit you see this is how he started as a naive confused christian not knowing his left from his right and with a few months and a few years of proper discipleship look what he has become a mighty battle axe now look at this why are many believers in church for many years the average church has two to three services per week and after many years the believer is still here fighting for appointment fighting for deaconry fighting for eldership fighting for this and that and that and that and that and sometimes the pressure and politics of ministry will make the person to be ordained here as a pastor are we together now a baby about to lead babies he does not know anything about the things of god members say we don't like you and he says i'm not doing ministry again why yeah, because he's a baby I hope you were blessed by this message. His to not keep the vision to yourself, share to as many as you can later. to help them bless. He Check our home page for more of our messages. Of Subscribe this to the channel. Comment on it. Like me? it. See you things. on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Catecatos, Cate Branda Catapa Cotosco to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline. The difference between this man and this woman is that at this level, you should have gained mastery. The things of the kingdom, you should not be learning how to walk at this level. When you see someone who is, you don't put babies on wheelchair. But if an adult cannot walk, you put him on wheelchair. Nobody puts a baby on wheelchair and says, I said you should walk and you are not walking. Nobody prays for a baby for a miracle and says, rise up and walk. It is, it is allowed in that realm. But when you become an adult and you cannot walk, it's an attack. Listen, there are, when people say they are matured as believers, ask them, what makes you think you are matured? Say, I'm not a baby Christian at all. I'm not. Why? What makes you believe? Say, I've suffered in this life. No, that's not the reason why you are, you are a matured Christian. Not at all. It is true that the fullness, don't get me wrong, please understand this. It is true that the fullness of affliction can refine. But suffering is not the reason why you are a matured Christian. You may be suffering as a result of ignorant attack that you don't have the knowledge for. This person should be able to help this person in a heartbeat. This person should be equipped with such spiritual knowledge. Listen, if I come and say, Pastor, I'm in trouble. Like an encyclopedia should just open. Which mystery? is allocated to solve this man's problem this is the justification for being spiritual when you talk to this person say, um you know the way life is you are supposed to be here not here this person should have at this point had a covenant with god or be connected to strong covenants 
that even where his or her personal faith fails, there should still be a way of routing results. Otherwise, who brought you here? Who qualified you here? Are you seeing that a lot of baby Christians continue to say they are much at this realm people can start falling in your meetings you don't need to get here right here in fact before you understand one impartation and you will use falling down and say watch Benihin is throwing people me too I'm throwing people we are the same whoever told you please understand what I'm teaching you this is a refresher series that many believers do not understand so the Bible says I will give you pastors after my heart men of God hear me you have an assignment to build people sequentially you must know what they are to become not hope that you are doing the right thing like an architect when an architect is building he does not sit down hoping that I hope the building is coming well he has the master plan already He's only hoping that you get to a point where you are able to understand. At this level, there is something you can tell God that will make God act in a certain way to this man that he does not yet have. It is one Lord reach unto all. But my brothers and my sisters, something you have done, a process of growth has brought you to this point. There is a level of relationship and intimacy you have with God. You cannot fear their fears. No. You cannot. If me and this guy pray, he's going to be frustrated. We can pray a general church prayer. But if he comes to the secret place to pray with me, this guy is going to be tired. He's going to pray from his realm. And he will hear me talk to God in a way that does not make sense. It may not even sound scriptural, but it is. There is a level, I will call God names he has not had anywhere. It's a name that my experience gave God. He can come to the secret place and see me sitting quietly on the ground like a herbalist. And say, sir, let's pray. I said, that's what I'm doing. And he said, I, I thought prayer is just when you are talking and rolling. And I say, yes. Just do what you are taught. You are correct. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul you satisfy my soul sing it one more time yeah. only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul listen don't worry you can stand back this is already a refresher course many of us are born again but I tell you why our lives are unfruitful I can watch you pray for one hour and tell you at least 10 things you have done wrong as serious as you are praying I will tell you the part that will be answered and the part that will not be answered I will tell you what was unnecessary in the content of your prayer now at this point God will not show you because the goal is not the accuracy of your prayer but the zeal of your prayer so he will allow the error just pass there's no need for accuracy he's cultivating zeal you can pray and make mistakes the goal is that you become prayerful the realm of accuracy is waiting for you in the future so you will find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense but the more you pray the more God is backing it. The idea, it is easier to edit your prayer life when you have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. When you are corrected here, you will be discouraged. When you get here, you will find out that many things you prayed for were already answered in your growth. 
you were never supposed to pray for them growth already answered that prayer request only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul please sit down sit down there are many people parading themselves as matured christians you say why you say i've been born again for 10 years what does that mean what does that mean it is true that longevity if well utilized that's time and if you invested in it spiritually the bible says that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting but he that sows to the flesh will reap corruption you can sow to the flesh for many years it does not mean you reap life are we together this thing i told you is the basic foundation of any believers christian life if you do not know this you will leave god eventually something about the absence now imagine that where, where are you come imagine that this guy just got born again and the next thing he's hearing is a teaching on influence or a teaching on prosperity this guy is going to fail woefully do you know why because it is dangerous to be taught prosperity as a carnal man the flesh will not allow the purity of that message to bless you the message will fall on lust that is already there and it will make this guy a dangerously materialistic person so there is a sequence of growth not every topic is relevant to every believer imagine that this guy gets born again and his first message is love and and life partner and relationship do you know what is going to happen to this guy he's already dead even before the series on relationship is over because i can tell you this guy's prayer life is not going anywhere this guy's life is not going anywhere the awareness that there is a beautiful lady to see and marry would not you think he will pray the way you are praying that you are praying like a madman not when you are aware lady is looking at you no how ah, what if i I, I miss the moment and the flesh is there deceiving you and you are failing programming woeful failure but if this guy is taught that the beginning of his life is God he can be praying like a madman any lady that does not like that demonstration does not like a profitable destiny yes sir There are people today who cannot pray in tongues because they were taught something before tongues. And what they were taught corrupted their passion, that reckless abandonment. Let me tell you, those days when we started ministry here, you would see the ladies, including hot CC ladies, when it's time to pray, they will roll under the anointing from one point to the other. They will stand up with the whole the whole paraphernalia run pulled to pieces. It matters how we are taught. It matters who, who defines your spiritual value. Who cultivates your hunger and your appetite for the things of God. The keys of the kingdom now i said that because it was important to lay this foundation but in this refresher series my, my goal is really not to touch on these basics now i want to refresh and show us again and i'm praying in the name of jesus christ remember it's this week and next week i'm praying that what you did not see before may you see it now how do i know i have caught light the results the results show that the light has come if the results cannot show with time then the light never came how do I know how can I trust the content of the information I have one of the greatest um, concerns and prayer in my life is not to believe a lie that I should not believe something I hold true and find out after many years that i've been wasting my time believing in a lie 
the Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness. There are things people have believed about prosperity that is punishing them today because the content was wrong. There are things people believe about church and ministry and ministry growth today that is making them languish in failure in spite of the fact that they are anointed. There is a, an exact body of knowledge allocated for the truths that you desire. And I'm going to run through them this week and next week. Can you lay hands on your head and command that in the name of Jesus, your understanding is fruitful. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Speak to my mind, be open. Hallelujah. Now, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Let's go back, please. And let's deal with these issues now. Sincerely, it's my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ that we'll hold these keys and we will rise in a way and manner. The mysteries of the kingdom demystify life. They bring you to a point where you see that life is not as complicated as it looks. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Say, I receive it. And whatsoever you bind, the word bind there should not confuse you. Declare to be improper. A particular version says disallow. And then it talks about allowing. Now watch this. Notice the sequence according to Amplify. That it is what has been bound in heaven. You replicate it in the earth. And what has been allowed in heaven, you replicate it. So the keys are keys that allow you to replicate heaven. Remember the sequence is that it be done in the earth as it is in heaven. It is not going to be done in heaven as it is done in the earth. So realities are first finished in the heavenlies and then they are replicated in the earth. The keys of the kingdom. Still amplified Psalm 82. Let's start from verse 5. Still amplified. Very powerful rendition. It says, they know not amplified amplified keep amplified there please it says the magistrate and the judges know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness of complacent satisfaction and all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking six I said you are God since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. Indeed, all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7, let's shout it together. One to go. But you shall die as men and fall as one of the princes. So the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge. The keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge specific knowledge that gives us enlightenment and authority access to spiritual truth access to information illumination these are the keys that make for dominion so the bible says there are things that have been permitted to walk in the heavenlies and there are things that are not permitted to walk in the heavenlies. When you obtain the keys of the kingdom in terms of spiritual knowledge and information, they are the keys that activate and deactivate possibilities in the earth realm. These are the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Please understand, I'm teaching now. They are the keys that activate. There are possibilities, but they must be activated through knowledge. And there are possibilities that can be deactivated. For instance, premature death is a possibility. It can be deactivated. Like you detonate a bomb. Are we together? 
long life is a possibility but it's activated delay is a possibility activated speed is a possibility activated mediocrity these are all possibilities in the earth realm and so he says i give you keys that means i give you access to i i will bring a file and run through all the possibilities available to mankind choose the ones to activate and set them ablaze in your life and deactivate all the ones you will find some already activated the average believer when he comes into christ when you are born either by territory or culture or ordinances there are possibilities already activated for you they were activated through covenants they were activated through yokes your assignment is to know the keys of the kingdom like a pilot sitting and say no i off this i off this delaying destiny i off this mediocrity i off this i put on the switch of speed i put on the switch of the anointing why am i a pastor with no members i deactivated he said i give you the keys of the kingdom please listen very carefully please sit down you will find the possibility of poverty activated and tied there many families to remain so but you come through knowledge and you find out that this is not a possibility in the economy of god and you are shown the key to bring it down and suddenly your life changes and they say are you not someone who is associated with this territory you say no more the keys and i will give you the keys of the kingdom listen the bible says speaking to abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes and see that means from where you are you can go anywhere but there is a key that takes you there you don't need to go somewhere else from where you are your location your territory notwithstanding you can rise from there please pay attention because what i show you will disarm principalities and powers what i show you will tame life and you will play life like a chess people will only look forward to your downfall as a prophecy that has failed already you are you are standing with stability you are not afraid of your results they came by light let me tell you this any dimension you step into not by understanding you will be afraid of the result because the boundaries of the spiritual knowledge that should give you confidence and stability is not there a car comes to you and you are afraid what if it spoils will another one come but there is a body of knowledge that when you know it gives you stability if god says give the car you will give it number one out of faith but number two out of understanding of not just god alone the economy of the system has been opened to you The major assignment of a believer is growth. The major assignment of a believer is enlightenment. Being brought through the power of light to a spiritual dimension where ignorance fades away. Not boastfulness, not arrogance, but you come to a place of stability. I know whom I have believed. Ah. And I am persuaded see there are things when you tell me today it is going to be stupid for me to be worried about no like the future of the ministry like what makes you believe that in the next five to ten years the ministry will be standing strong you see fear truly comes because of ignorance there are things i've found in my life like gems and i pray i pray i pray i pray dear ones in the name of jesus christ that the spirit that enlightens brings light may that grace open you up to light in the mighty name of jesus christ see let me tell you 
when you talk there will be mockers there will be foolish men who think you are a talkative until you see the unlimited power these are keys they are not suggestions they are keys they are backed up by God's integrity they are not backed up by a professor a governor a president a monarch this is God we are talking about here please sit down I feel sad and respectfully speaking I submit to you that I feel sorry for any man in our generation today who ignores access to this body of light he has only signed himself and his generation to a life of pain and tragedy I don't care who and I don't care what arrogance is back of that ignorance there are truths when you ignore it's a generation that pays for it it's not an individual listen you are hearing the things that you are hearing blessed are your ears revelation says for they hear these things the truths that you are hearing are a word that is coming to Jacob and is coming for the sake of Israel when God wants to visit Israel he finds Jacob and sends a word to Jacob and it lightens upon Israel thou will show me the path of light for in your light we see light who can claim to see when God has not shown you light what are you seeing Job 29 and verse 3 Job 29 and verse 3 please let's hurry up let's work together media Job 29 and verse 3 Job is speaking now when his candle did what shined upon where my head not upon my feet the first assignment of the light of God is not your feet is to shine upon your head to take away that darkness that vagueness that assumption it may be an age old age old assumption but it's still an assumption a popular assumption is still an assumption and then he says and by his light I walk through darkness that a man can find his way out of light and you find your way and stand in a position where your life becomes a living wonder not that you walk miracles you are one yourself a living miracle your life is a message whether you are preaching or not this is what God is making you become and listen to me you don't become it just by wish you are exposed to an organized body of spiritual knowledge understand my choice of words not every spiritual information makes men there must be an organized body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the various dimensions of God that you want to see manifest in your life when you learn this let me see the power let me see the cause let me see the yoke let me see the enchantment let me see the divination let me see the scourging tongues of men and the ill wishes of men that sustains the power to keep you down it no longer exists you will know how cheap darkness is when you stand from a point of spiritual illumination it is true that when the light shines in darkness truly the darkness does not comprehend it where we are right now we have to admit is a product of an inaccurate understanding of the body of knowledge allocated for the results we desire please hear me I'm careful to say this thing because sometimes it looks like pride you hear people prophesy I did this I did this and favor came and for me it's not the testimony do you know what you did and can you do it any result that cannot be reproduced is not a real result you can stumble into results but sustainable results that dumbfound the pride of this arrogant age must come by knowledge 
Apostle, you don't understand my situation. That's why. If you were in my shoes, no, sir. I respect your pain, but I admit to you, your pain is proof of the dominion of darkness. Let light come, and you will watch what happens. Because every desire that we have, there is an allocation, an allocation of it based on the word of God. And if it is not captured in my life, I must admit that there is something I do not know. The earlier you admit that there's something you did not know, the better for you, quickly. Don't wait till you fail for a long time. The moment you start failing, stop, stop, stop immediately and say, I'm not continuing until I'm sure of what I'm doing. That way you will redeem time. Many people fail for many years. They are humbled by life before they have to come back and say, okay, I didn't get it. Let me get it now. You will thank me for the truths that I share with you. You will thank me for the truths that I show you. Hallelujah. Now let's explore some keys of the kingdom. Number one. There's part one and there's part two. The first key is found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Everybody read the first four words. Please shout it as loud as as you can first four words one two read one more time one more time one more time last time now this is the first law when god does not begin a thing it has failed in the beginning of anything is not knowledge in the beginning of anything is not skill in the beginning of anything is not connection in the beginning of anything is god hmm. i am alpha omega don't call me to join something you started if i do not begin it my commitment is not there i show you a powerful secret in the beginning of your business, God. In the beginning of your marriage, God. In the beginning of your exploits. In the beginning of ministry. This is a secret that has changed my life. Anything God does not start, He will not back. He has to start it as Alpha. Because when he starts it, you will use his methods. You will not use your method and call on him to back it later. Our proud world today thinks God is only useful for spiritual life. When they want to do business, they take God out. When they want to do ministry, they take God out. Love and relationship, they take God out. Everything, they take God out. But I show you the first four words. Keep it there, please, media. This is the first spiritual law. That I want to show you tonight in the beginning of my life God in the beginning of my ministry not passion not desire not assignment consciousness God now the center of it all it's you that I see it's you that I see I don't see myself, I don't see my achievements. At the center of it all is you that I see. Is you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Let's sit down. In the beginning of my marriage, or my desire to marry, beauty, you are joking, you will pay for it. The beginning of my desire to marry a macho, handsome guy with a job with NMPC, you will pay for it eventually. In the beginning of my business, intelligence. 
and a well accredited mentorship you are you are failed already the first secret to excelling in life is for God to not be a participant but the alpha of all that you do don't call God to participate in an idea that you finish with yourself you organized it you chose your life partner you chose how many children you will give birth to and you say God come and bless it no God does not work like that you started your business you chose your location by yourself you even bought the first consignment as soon as it arrived Nigeria I say Lord here it is it's yours it's not his own you started your ministry decided where the church will start you already ordained pastors you called members you called everybody and you say Lord behold your 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 assembly no sir the great know the secret to lifting they don't move Moses said do not send us away from here we cannot start this journey oh, if your presence will not go with us we are wasting our time it didn't say if our weapons don't go with us it didn't say if our gold a man that had gold had weapons yet he's saying these things are mundane God if you will not go with me please don't send me how shall they know that we're people that are separated and God says you got it my presence will go with you and I will give you rest the Bible says for with God all things for with God not for when you are moving and say okay God why are you leaving me oh yeah now come and hurry up and join and then you say God come no sir no sir no sir Lord where are you if you will not lead I'm not going I'm not going Lord if you will not lead me in ministry I'm not going is it not written in your Bible that if the Lord is your shepherd you shall not want no. thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he said I am the vine don't be confused we are together but you are the branches you are not the vine I am the vine you are connected to me but you are the branch he distributes it very clearly our dominion is shared dominion not dominion that is derived by our own strength it's a secret that i've worked with in my life my brothers and my sisters i have no business going where god is not going it is not my concern at all the pressures of life will push you to many things and places where god is not there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death what looks cheap now will be costly when you start paying for it when we're about to start this ministry haven't done everything by the spirit three days before koinonia would start we had done crusades we had been in ministry for a while but before koinonia would start i still went back for a retreat god please one more time are you the one speaking and are you still leading i tell you the truth if god said no that would be the end of it he must lead the way when he leads the way you will follow now thanks be to god who causes us like a blind man how many of you have seen a blind man walking accurately it's not because he can see he's following a man who can see and the man will lead him many people do not know this dimension of God we start things by emotion and then we ask God to join when things begin to backfire and God says no 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 you're on your own start with God in your life and watch your life turn into a sign and a wonder no matter how bad it looks if God says I am there go 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 I remember years ago the things that we now walk in God said so and I said Lord if you lead we are going home. and look what God has done and look what he continues to do in the beginning God please return to the place of prioritizing God don't use God let him lead the way many of us only say yes to God if we said yes to it already you just say God just help me confirm 
No, you must be flexible. Lord, is this ministry your will? I've been in it for 10 years, but talk to me now. If it is not you, I'm closing it this night. Many of us, our ego will not allow us to be that obedient. Is God speaking to us? In the beginning, God. Let God start your life. So whatever happens, you can say, God, please, I'm here. If God directs you and grants you approval and you get married to a wife and that lady becomes barren, two years, three years, you have a legal right to go to God with your wife. Stand with God and say, Lord, you are the one that joined us all. We came to you. You gave us the right to choose, but we returned it to you. And we say we don't trust ourselves. Guide our decision. And you guided us. Now the devil is bringing barrenness. You put pressure on his integrity. And he will have to arise. If you call me and you are around maybe a bank somewhere and you say you don't have money and I say pick the bike and come and meet me you told me already you don't have money but I said you should come by the time you come and you cannot pay the bike who will pay for it I ask you to come I must take responsibility for your obedience you will always be afraid to go to God when he did not start with you what will you go and tell God now? Of course, his mercy is there. But you cannot stand now and say, Oh God, this wife you gave me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You were at the beer parlor. Under the heavy... And then on that day, you drank unusually. And it's from the standpoint of that drunkenness, you made a destiny decision. And now you have to pay for it. Of course, God is a merciful God and he can restore. But the truth is, before the restoration comes, you'll be paying for it until the word of the Lord came. The word tried him. Look at me, please. Don't be too big to allow God to start. Don't feel my ego is there. I'm too intelligent. Let church not, not make me a dull person. I'm intelligent. I went to school. Not destiny not destiny you must learn to step back and say oh god of heaven i declare before you sincerely there is nothing that i know moves god like a broken and a contrite heart let god find a man who is genuinely broken and contrite he will veto whatever is wrong and come a broken heart is a real invitation for his presence are we together let me give us one more There are keys, so the keys are many. You hold them and hang them like a chain, a chain of royalty, a royal diadem, and you move through life. You stand by this door, you remove one key. You open it. There are doors you don't just open, you break the door so that others can pass too. Because you can pass and the door will be locked. He has broken the gates of brass not opened it, broken it, and cut the bars of iron in sunder so that others can pass. Will I pass a door and my child will not pass? Number two. Are, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Please use this. Please use this. God told me something years ago and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. In other words, if like John, you agree to decrease. John said in John chapter 3 and verse 31, he says that I may decrease so that you may increase. And I, if I be lifted up, not you, if you are lifted up, you will fall. But if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. When they bow down to Jesus, 
they also bowed down to the donkey that was carrying him when they put the leaves on the ground for Jesus to walk his feet never touched the palm but it was the donkey that carried him who told you when you carry Jesus you fail it's an honor to let the world see him it's something I've learned in ministry it's something I've learned in my life sincerely my desire I tell you is not for fame it's not for power it's not for money I desire from the depth of my heart to represent the face of God to a generation to show a generation that it pays to lift the name of the Lord it pays to be passionate over the things of God in a man's lifetime and I remember when God showed me a vision and I saw a generation of men I was standing somewhere no food no water they were crying that whole generation and I came to them I said why they said you are the reason and I was afraid to go because a few people were looking for me and I made up my mind that I will go if I perish I perish as soon as I stepped out I saw a giant man and he held my hands he said let's go for you to be lifted all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all I want is for for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. When God begins your life, the passion for fame dies, I tell you. The passion to prove a point, the celebrity obsession dies at once. I want to be known so that I prove to other people I'm not a failure. It's totally unnecessary. Provided in your journey is enough evidence of the hand of God. I tell you why God does not use many people. It's not because they don't pray. It's not because they don't fast. It's not because they are not holy. Because the corruption in their heart, the dimension of obsession for fame, and the, some of you, as you are looking at me like this, if, if a drop of anointing comes on your destiny, God will not hear you again everybody must bow down to you everybody must kneel down and lie down to greet you and you will keep the person there for everybody to see before you say now you can stand up my my dear son all this pride that continues to kill men i tell you why many people do not rise there are some of us we have it hidden some of us are boastful and outspoken about it others are quiet but it's still there waiting for something to bring it out that 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 appetite to outshine is a loss that needs to crumble at his presence in the beginning god and at the end of it god if nobody ever sees me today and all they see is god and his mighty works sincerely i stand before the god of heaven and i tell you i am satisfied i am the things that you see and hear God doing through my life and this ministry, I stand and I bless him for it. But let me tell you this. You ask God, he will tell you. I have no business trying to search for fame, apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God. Thank God for all of those things. But my brothers and my sisters, I'm wise enough to know that without him, I can do nothing get to that point in your life where everything about God is your obsession don't use God to get fame listen let me tell you many people leave God to try to get money and you find out how much have you gotten how much you have just gotten trouble all around when God swears over you to lift you let any obstacle clear that way because even if you are a believer it will crush you when God vows upon a man listen if you can make this vow this night and say Lord 
I give up this search for to be known. Now, sometimes it's not demonic. It's because of our background. We came from backgrounds where, and some of us, our cultures, you derive respect from the money, the jeep, the car, the house. The moment that is there, they say, ah, you are a real man. Thank God for culture. But please be born again. Please be born again. Don't just be saved. Be born again. Subscribe to another culture. Let me tell you this. When you hide behind the cross, that is the way the whole world sees you. The secret to your being seen is his being seen. When they see Jesus, they have to see you. My life is a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, share what I teach you and be wise and rise from this mediocrity in life. It does not start with just intellect. There is a place for all these things. But don't forget these first four words that start your Bible. In the beginning, God. Not in the middle, then God comes. Uh -uh. In the beginning, this is how I run my life. It is God. Oh. Everything I have belongs to Him. You never hear me say, you only hear me say my thing, just in terms of responsibility. But God knows. If He started the beginning, then anything I find there is His own before I came. My house is His own. My cars, His own. The influence, His own. The fame, His own. The anointing, His own. I'm only a steward and I remain a steward forever. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I show you why only few people ever rise in a generation. It's not Rema. It's not miracles. You can walk every miracle you know and be shocked that your influence never grows. You can have every revelation you have and move in dimensions of power never seen and be shocked that people receive your miracles and still despise you. Let I all the other name fade away. Let that be your prayer. Let I every other name fade away. Till there's only you and every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. And every other name fade away. Listen down. Let's start the second. The second is almost a master key, except that it submits to God too. The second is almost a master key. Listen, listen. What I'm about to share with you now will take away worry from your life. This worry about what to eat. This worry about what to wear. This worry about how you will become famous. It will fade completely and live your life. This is a revision series. You may not have gotten it the last time. But please get it now. Success is not pursued. Success is not pursued. Success is not what you look for. You will never find it. Success was designed to come just like fate. Just like fate, comet. You don't pursue faith. Uh -uh. You don't pursue success. Please hear me. Success is what is attracted to you by reason of who you are becoming. Not what you are doing. Who you are becoming. Please understand this spiritual law and stop wasting your time looking for mundane things that will never come. Success is not what you pursue. Seeking success is a cause. Spending your life looking for it is a cause. 
are we together now please look up let me teach um come gentlemen let me have six or eight gentlemen sit down pastor Alphonse. sit down please come sit down you come quickly so that we'll save time just stand this way stand facing me space yourselves thank you thank you and you stand um, my friend you stand here watch this everybody thank you now please watch this call all of these people the needs of men say the needs of men one more time please shout it say the needs of men call sam is looking sharp call this financial prosperity you are all looking sharp eh? my dear people you are all looking sharp now watch this call this financial prosperity that's what you are looking for are we together call this marital peace oh how we need it marital peace are we together call this influence and fame we need it too social media world we need it a lot likes and follows call this speed are we together call this what do you call this favor ah koinonia favor favor and then call this impact now watch this this is me help me starting out my life with zero possibilities zero possibilities now watch this did you know how frustrating it would be for me ladies and gentlemen to start pursuing these things one by one these six only represent the uncountable needs that represent success to men and we think that the way to become successful is to isolate these things one by one and begin to seek them that burden is too much an intelligent god will not design success that way are we together now so when you pursue success it means if you are to spend 120 years on earth you spend 30 years seeking no money is even a lifetime you spend 30 years seeking a wife or a husband another how many years seeking all of these things your lifetime together will not allow you get them this is the cause of the fallen man to seek things one by one jesus rebuked people again and again for seeking things he says the gentiles run after these things they run after they run after but your heavenly father knows that ye have need of it now watch this this is how god designed the kingdom i pray for you that you will get this once and for all now watch this at this level notice my prayer i'm a prayer warrior oh god open the windows of heaven finances give me finance oh god a good wife good children i will never give birth to an armed robber i won't give birth to a thief at this level your prayer is valid because there are many things you do not know father grant me favor in the name of jesus lord grant me fame grant me speed and i'm praying and sometimes i'm tempted to leave god to quickly get them now watch this all these guys represent levels everybody say levels they represent dimensions say dimensions for every level i get to designed by god are the possibilities already allocated to gravitate towards my growth at that level so human beings are inversions are we together now there is a version of me that cannot be a millionaire no it is god's law that will stop that version from being a millionaire it's not an attack if i pray to be a millionaire god will answer me by providing the growth that takes me to the realm where that possibility was allocated please understand what i'm teaching you now the challenge with believers is that we stay where we are and we try to use prayer to what are you called impacts now i'm here oh, full of ignorance and pride and yet i want to make benny Hinn's impact and i borrowed the impact for two weeks like a rubber ring what happens it will leave me again anything that does not come to you because of your growth must leave you it will leave 
as losses it will live as armed robbers it will live as thieves forget about the actors there is a law that compels that any level that you any object you get that does not resonate with your growth must leave you it's a law i show you the laws of the kingdom i show you the way we grow now watch this these guys are standing here now gentlemen this is what i want you to do for every step i take forward you to take a step forward are, are we together now watch this i am here and i was invited to come for koinonia a broke confused wearing my smelly cloth all i know is god and i have the the opportunity to sit under a heavy anointing and mentorship and now i am taught certain things watch this as the word of god is shining upon my mind i may not know what i'm doing but i'm taking a step and the things i'm looking for are also taking a step are you seeing that now all at once or this is what will happen step back when i step to your level you step forward are we together now watch this i am here right now and i move forward and these guys come now notice without prayer some results start coming because i grew there now my eye is here and it's good to look far but it's not going to come to your life listen hold on let me teach you something if papa ea adeboye today empties his account this night before 12 noon millions will come back i will tell you why it's not because there are givers it's not because he's a man of god when the money disappears the law of god will send a signal to heaven that this growth level should not have this kind of account reflect the justice system of god must balance that destiny this is what physics has tried to describe a long time ago that there is a system of balance in life it is not a lie please understand this now watch this i sit down here as a confused christian and if i'm not properly mentored i quickly come here and lie down on someone's bmw and just say it is mine if you mean it is yours with the law of process and engaging this you are right but you mean you want it now even if they give you now there is a system design that will take it from you see let me tell you it is why many people never hold on to things sustainably they have balloon success they open up today and shrink back again there were certain things that it would be stupid for me to desire 10 years ago 15 years ago no growth brought it so i'm growing praying every day as i'm learning a key as i'm sowing seeds as i'm building look at what i'm doing it's moving towards me moving towards me are you seeing that now a time will come where everything that i see come gentlemen i will be immersed in my possibilities i can no longer leave them it will not make a difference again whether i give or don't give financially speaking i've entered a realm of financial equilibrium where what goes and what comes it doesn't make a difference the only thing is just my faith with god but at this level when i give i will know it i will know something left me now watch this let me tell you what god is doing to you every week you are coming you are right here you may not know what is happening listen to me please just be sensitive and pay attention you may not know what it is that is happening to you but this is the law of god man of god don't sit back just admiring everybody while you are praying you are learning the principles you are learning leadership what you are doing is you are walking through life what you are looking for is also looking for you what you are looking for is also looking for you a day will come by the spirit of god hear me please that day except god is not god a day will always come that includes the anointing watch this Sit back. call these dimensions of the anointing my brothers you cannot stand at this level 
and want to operate in the anointing and the spirit at this level no matter what impartation all this double portion prayer of course is just a sincere prayer by well-meaning people even the man of god knows it's not double portion that came on that person it just fell down so that it's just hunger that was imparted to go back to the secret place this is where benny Hinn started and he kept growing he kept growing he has to touch everybody here for them to be imparted and he will be tired from hours of personal ministration but as he stepped up he got to a level where his word became his hands it can reach people and touch them it doesn't matter where now watch this at this level the anointing will not move till you play the keyboard clash the cymbal charge everywhere till there is prayer till the people fast till their hearts are open he thinks that's how god operates until he comes higher you get to a realm where someone can be doubting you and still go under the anointing he does not believe you he even hates you yet he's rising from a wheelchair so what took him up for every time you backslide this is what happens every time you are offended and angry i won't go to church again i'm tired this is what you are doing to yourself shifting you father sincerely this thing i'm acting is how destiny works let me tell you this business people hear me if you believe that you will imaginarily stumble into millions just by meeting a business or an investment or become just tumble into it you are joking it will leave you it is only growth that has the power to keep any possibility so the way we succeed it's not what we do it is who we become there is a version of me that should not be inside an aircraft if I enter an aircraft the aircraft will throw me out are we together there is a version of me that should not have a car if I want a car I don't look for a car I grow into the realm where a car was allocated So when I'm here, watch this. In this realm as provided by God, there should be cars and there should be houses. If God says, so your car and you give it, the realm itself will look for a replacement. It is God's system. There is a level that you stand, you will never have more than 500 members. It doesn't matter how many days you fast, you cannot have it. Your mind and your growth does not allow it. You can stand and be offended. The more you insult a man that has a crowd and say, what is crowd? This is what you are doing to your own results. You are authorizing the realm of the spirit to reject you when those possibilities come near you. But when you stand and grow and say, Lord, what did you show them? As the light of God is shining upon your head, you are moving from obscurity from mediocrity please understand what i teach you this is how the great rise that's why they are not afraid of their growth they did not jump they grew and jesus increased listen let me tell you this forget about poverty and forget about all of these things i'm not saying don't pay attention to them do you know you will grow and not know when this realm the possibilities there left you which tailor will sew my cloth oh you go around looking for a tailor you would die looking for a tailor just grow the tailor is waiting for the renewed version of you there is a realm where a tailor has been kept to adorn you did joseph look for the person who would put his garment was he not in the prison the garment maker was waiting for the renewed version of him there are many things you are praying for now that have been answered already in your growth let me get a jeep what is jeep my brothers and my sisters don't mock the investment of the spirit upon your life when you know this anybody that receives a miracle is like the hand of a clock rotating you start rejoicing because it's the same thing you are hearing and you know that your turn is coming see let me tell you come when you stand at this realm and people begin to pray and say we know that one day it will go down this money will go down the crowd you see the foolishness of the imagination of weak men you are not here by luck 
the justice of God is what backs the result at this level. The only thing God can do with you is to vet you based on his eternal standard. But as far as these things live in you, it will never go again. The only thing is that your system of accreditation and growth and vetting is not these things. No matter how God punishes you, please hear me, these things will not leave. The only way these things will leave is when you go back. And you cannot undo what you already know. That is the reason why Lucifer, the light bearer, can still make you prophesy, can still make you wealthy. Lucifer, you can go to Satan because he stood in a position as the exalted light bearer of God. And there were possibilities that were tied to his office. When he fell, the possibilities did not go. The knowledge is still with him. Therefore, the results still continue to come. It is true. It is true. There is a version of Jesus that 5,000 men could not come to. Not the baby in the manger. Not the 12-year-old Jesus. Not even the 30 unbaptized Jesus. There was a version of Jesus that creation was waiting for. And the Father told that version, creation, now hear ye this version. Not the version in the tabernacle. Hear me. Everything you are looking for is looking for you. But not this version of you. So once and again, your future keeps coming to you and checking if you are there. And returns back and says, we have not yet seen him. Your future is answering God. So the Bible says creation is waiting. Waiting for the manifest. Creation keeps checking. Are they there? He says they are not yet there. But when you grow, you will grow to a realm where creation will now see the manifestation of the songs of God. Please hear me. There is a version of this ministry that we cannot go to at this level. No. There is a level of grace and power and intelligence and knowledge. The future of this ministry is already waiting. Checking for us and saying Koinonia has not arrived. In that future, Koinonia is not yet there. If we stop here, God will have to make do with what is available. But that's not what would have been. So when we continue to grow, a day will come, this building will start driving us. This building, like a living thing, will start saying, go out. Go out of this environment. And the environment waiting for us will start saying, come, you are ready. There is a way you will grow that the house you are staying now will drive you. It must drive you. The key is not to start looking for another house. The key is to wait. You will know you are ready when the house starts driving you. There are clothes you are wearing today that will run away. You will not give it. You will not sow it, but you will not find it. The same way you could not find the former ones you are wearing. Where were they? Where are they now? The clothes you wore 10 years ago, where is it? You did not pack it in a bag and sold it. Where did it go to? Please understand what I teach you. These are the secrets that the Lord brought to me and gave me rest. I don't chase things. You can stay from your room and like a magnet attract anything from the globe. Provided it is on earth, they will walk like the animals. This was the strategy that brought the animals to the ark of Noah. The animals were in the bush. If Noah went looking for them one by one, he would die there. I show you this from scripture. Noah built the ark. The moment the ark was ready, this law started calling the animals. One by one, they started marching. If animals came to the ark, your money is on earth, but the hand to collect it is not this hand. There is a hand that is trained by the Lord. When you lift it from all over the earth, it will come. The average believer after responding come please after responding to an altar call honestly does not know what he should do again and he would have to subscribe to the ideology that is predominant within the territory where he got saved
now it looks very simple but sometimes it can be very poisonous because it matters who talks to you about god and it matters what you are told it matters the jurisdiction of the spiritual information that is supplied you you can hate god because he was wrongly proposed you can have imbalance in your spiritual life because some well-meaning but maybe ignorant person communicated a dimension of christ in a lopsided way and i told us again and i've shared it here in this house that how we grow matters not just that we grow now think with me for instance that this gentleman just got born again and the next topic he hears is love and marriage or financial prosperity as powerful as it is this guy is already in trouble you see there, there is a foundation of truth that he should be taught to make the issue of marriage or the issue of finance make sense you see that now if this guy has not been taught things like how to deal with the flesh conformity to the image of the christ you know how to rise beyond the vicissitudes of this life that life of surrender the prosperity is going to destroy this man he will have the money because the principles work but it will be at the expense of his soul but the bible says to prosper even as your soul prospers that means while you are prospering in other areas there has to be a check if you find out your soul is not prospering then you need to vet the system you are following if it's god's system you will prosper even as your soul prospers hallelujah when a believer gets born again this is the sequence or gets saved the next assignment of this believer is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus from john 15 john 16 in fact john 14 he began to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit that he was on his way going but the comforter the comforter whom the father will send in my name the gospel of john he began to introduce us to the holy spirit when he gets to chapter 16 he says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth so you see his assignment he will guide you into all truth that means you have to be guided truth is not on the ground and you just pick anywhere you have to be guided and that is in the office of the holy spirit as a distinct personality of the godhead to guide believers into all truth studying scripture without his guidance will lead to error imbalance and religion when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will show you the things that will come he will take up what is mine and give it to you are we together so this man is introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and that encounter with the holy spirit first begins to open his organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit because the bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit number two the bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit he cannot receive because they are spiritually discerned are we together no matter how illiterate no matter how educated no matter how enlightened the moment you want to start that spirit work you have to subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit it is very very important if you do not subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit you will you will walk with god purely based on intellect or based on the sociological context of life and all of these things are within the three-dimensional realm you will not be able to walk with the holy spirit and walk with god outside of this realm if you are together please say amen, amen. you can mechanically pick the bible and just begin to read like any atheist would just read to know about the christian faith but this book that you see has to be opened by the spirit isaiah 29 and verse 11 it's a popular scripture here please give it to us isaiah 29 and verse 11 read with me is projected please one two read and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee 
And he said, I cannot, for it is what? Notice, it didn't say it is closed. It is sealed. So you can open it, and yet it is sealed. Next verse, 12. And the book is delivered unto him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. You see, there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned come together and depend on the Holy Spirit. This is very important because the ways of God are not the ways of man. The methodologies of the kingdom sometimes are very ego stinging and insulting. And until you become spiritual by your submitting to the Holy Spirit, you will not be effective in your spirit work. That was why Naaman refused to wash. He was angry. He was embarrassed. What kind of nonsense is this? You brought me to embarrass me before a prophet. The prophet did not even come out to even honor me. Is it that he's not aware that I am Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army? And the little lady encouraged him and said, look, um, if he had told you to do another thing that is worse, wouldn't you do it? And the man humbled himself, washed seven times in a very dirty river, and then came out clean. The ways of God. Alas, master, for it was missing. They, where they met with prophet Elisha was very, very straight, narrow. And they went to a greater place. And while they were felling the trees, the axe head fell. You would expect that he would say, who can swim? So that we'll get it quickly. But th that was already a hopeless situation. Scientifically. He said, where fell it? And he took a stick. Threw it there. And all of a sudden, it came back. The prophets began to eat and they shouted, there's death in the pot. And he took flour and sprinkled on it. And said, go ahead and eat. It's been cleansed. So the, the ways of God are a mystery. You have to understand a serpent comes and is buffeting the people. And then a brazen serpent is lifted. And they are told to just look at it. That whoever would not look at that serpent will be a victim of this one. Very, very powerful the ways of God. In God's economy, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Are you seeing that now? Yes. So it takes being spiritual to really, really become a kingdom person. Now I began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom. We'll continue from there. Bless God. Number one, we looked at two last week. Number one was the concept of starting and prioritizing God. God only, God first, God above all. And we explored the first three words of Genesis or first four words of Genesis 1 verse 1. I'm just doing a quick recap. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1, the first four words, in the beginning, God. The beginning of everything must be God. You do not ask God to come and patch your life. You don't create your agenda, create your plans, and ask God to endorse it. Uh -uh. He's Alpha, Omega, not Kronos, Omega. God will not join you on the way. He has to start. Are we together? The Bible does not call him Kronos. You don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions. He's Alpha, and omega and so we challenged ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt god and his purposes above their desires above their intentions i want it this way but i acknowledge the fact that when god becomes above everything he protects he preserves two we spoke about the concept of success, tying it with the law of the mind, is very important. That transformation is important in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we reign by light, we reign by knowledge, and that knowledge comes through transformation. Transformation through renewal and enlightenment. Take notes. Transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment. Renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of Christ. Not everything in your mind is dangerous. Not everything in your mind is wrong. But when you come to Christ, the Holy Spirit, Adam, before his fall, did not need renewal. 
there was no need for renewal are we together the content in his mind and his understanding came directly from god satan began to sow a seed of an information when jesus came the bible says um, god now came walking in the cool of the day adam where art thou he said i heard thy voice but i hid because i was naked and he said who told you that means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me who told you who told you you have banked an information that is a seed that will grow are we together yes i hope you know that it is not only god that is the sower of the word it is not only satan to sows. remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears while men slept an enemy whoever that enemy is we know he's a farmer too because he sows so you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with you can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing this is why transformation is powerful you look at a little child a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother and give the child one or two years the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from the baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying the baby is laughing where did that come from certainly not from the womb but where for god's sake did that come from when has the child associated cry with joy are we together now so you see the kind of world that we live in he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me and then the way life works ensures that you remain um, a sinner in many ways the anger from the boss man i mean what he would do someone depriving you of your rights and you know all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding and then the bible says in romans chapter 12 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren it's not a sermon it's a plea by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of service verse 2 says and do not be conformed here it is do not be conformed to this world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern the system of operation that comes with this cosmos he says but be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind and that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of god philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset there was a thinking there was a body of conviction that made jesus that flawless when he was on earth and he's saying allow the word let there means allow allow this body of beliefs allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding very important ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind when your understanding is darkened you are alienated from the potential the experience of the life of god he says through the ignorance that is in them transformation is very important there is almost no hope for an effective christian life for any believer who ignores transformation and it's important because africa is a very superstitious continent and in nigeria where people who are very spiritual we would we would opt for wise sayings we would opt for a mix of trado african christian approaches and would not settle down for the word of god that is balanced truthful intelligent and transforming and this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of christians that we have and all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of god and it's not entirely so because there is a species of man that God cannot produce. So when you see that kind of man, you know that there was a corruption somewhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The mind is very powerful. I taught us about success. That true success in the kingdom is not something that we do. True success 
is what you attract by who you become. This is very powerful. There are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially, spiritually. They want to do things. And there is a place of doing. There is a place of action. But action is only relevant when there is transformation. Success is what you attract by who you become. There is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain. It's impossible. Are we together? You cannot see Papa Ia Deboe, for instance, at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish. His transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience somebody will be called you would think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him but someone will stand up and say sir please go back home give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result are you seeing how life works you don't say i hate poverty you are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level so this is a mistake that believers continue to make. We try to do things, and the things we do are higher than who we are. So the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels, our mindsets. Success is a product of growth. It's more than doing things. God can tell you you're going to have 5,000 members, but you have to grow. It's more than just prophecy. There are ethics that you honor at every level of growth. And as you continue to transit, your results continue to change to reflect the change in you. As you change, your clothes will change. As you change, your honor will change. As you change, your communication, your understanding, as it's changing, your relationships will change. Everything continues to change to reflect the changing person. You don't go and look for friends. You attract them by your growth. Are we together? You don't go around hand picking people. This is, the, this is the labor that God saved us from through transformation. Look how painful it is to go and select friends. How do you know the person will not change tomorrow? Allow the wisdom of God to select them. Your assignment is to grow. Does not deep call on to deep. When you grow, it begins to change. You cannot be wealthy and have poor friends. It's not about driving them. The law edits itself. It edits your possibilities. The moment there is that transition, your one room starts pushing you out without an intention to leave. You don't have to say, I'm, I'm tired of this place. No, that's not wise. Grow. There is a level to which you grow. Your one room will push you out and the laws of God will back your exit. They remained in Egypt until Moses started bringing an information. Moses said, thus said the God of the Hebrews, your 430 years is exhausted. He didn't preach in one day. They kept hearing it. While they started believing in Exodus, there was, there was, no matter how bound they were, they were forced out of the place. Listen, it is frustrating. This is why a fake life, and oh dear, God bless and help our generation. Gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time. It was authorized to live and it must live. There is no power in existence that can keep it with you. If I bless you with one million, your mind and your mind has not grown to that level. Your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth. It's not the issue of a spirit of, of, of uh, poverty. No. Satan is an opportunist. When he comes, he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy. Satan does not come to a man with a default strategy. His strategy is bespoke. It's made to your mindset. He will study your mindset from it, study your vulnerability, and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down. Satan cometh to me, but did not find anything. Satan comes to men and check, where is darkness? What gives me license? What gives me access? If your prayer life is on fire, he can't attack your prayer life. He will check your understanding of the word of God. 
They are called rulers of darkness. Their domain is when there is ignorance. Are we together? Mm. The law of the mind. When I learned this law, it changed my life. I knew that there had to be an easy way. It's difficult to give God glory the way many people seek success. Your assignment is to grow. When you grow from the intelligence of that growth, you will be guided on what to do circumspectly. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. And it says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life. Redeem time. You don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time. Time is automatic. But that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them. Like following the path of favor. Like following the path of mercy. Like following the path of growth rather than seeking things. When you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you, that's time wastage. But when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life, that's time redemption. So the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. Say, I'm growing. The third spiritual law, we're doing a revision. Thank you, Jesus. Halus kapratuskia. The law of faith. Let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch. The law of faith. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19, please. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Read with me. It's projected. One to read. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? The law of faith is a very powerful law. The Bible declares again and again in this kingdom, I'm doing a revision, that the just, the believer, one who has been justified in Christ, that you will live by faith. The only assurance of your victory, the only assurance of tomorrow, the assurance of success is faith. There is no earthly guarantee given to any man, not by any uncle, not by any auntie, not by any certificate, not by any platform. The authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith. And this is the victory that overcome, even by faith. Are we together? What is faith? Faith is your conviction, your conviction, your conviction. The name given to your conviction about God and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith. Faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out. It's as simple as that. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able. He has an ability and I know him. I'm persuaded. Are we together? Very important. Come, Sheun. Look at this, please. Now, if I look at Sheun now and I say, Sheun, I'm going to give you 1,000 naira. The first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks I am. My ability, my integrity, everything comes under pressure. At the instance of that word, he would have to verify whether, number one, I have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira. And then number two, whether I have the ability. I may have the willingness, the integrity, but not have the ability. So God allowed his word so we can vet him. He's not afraid of being vetted. God is saying, probe me, probe my integrity. I've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations. So that your conclusion on reading this is that God is not a man that he should lie. Are we together now? It's not something you just believe. He tells you, go through it. I allow you to have this, the chronicles of my integrity, so that you will believe me. When I say I can lift a man from a dunghill and sit him with princes, vet it. Did I not raise Joseph? Did I not raise Esther? Ah, it's powerful to believe God. There are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony and to assure them of some support system. Um, there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you 30,000. You will never rise. You will never move. Listen, 
if it is God, he will prove himself. Faith. Powerful. Find a believer that has faith and understands faith. Now, faith is not just blindly believing. Faith is conviction. Are we together? And that conviction comes through understanding. You have really understood God and his ways when you know where, how you contribute in terms of your partnership, your participation. Listen, Bible faith does not leave everything to God. There is always man's role in that equation. Please understand this. Bible faith will never allow God to just do everything. There is always the participation and your participation is your believing God and then subscribing to the terms, the conditions that guarantee for that outcome. This is where many believers continue to miss it. Faith is more than just confession. Faith is more than just receiving, as important as they are. They are all equations in that, I mean, variables in that equation of faith. But Bible faith is not Bible faith until you find the condition allocated. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day that the Lord thy God. Now watch this. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2, it says, and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. Condition, if thou shall hearken to the voice of the Lord, if thou shall pay attention, if you place value on the speakings of God, if you place value on his ways, his intelligence, his methodology, you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there. Bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture, you say in the name of Jesus, I'm exalted above all nations. You are correct. But if you stop there, you will live a frustrated Christian life. There is a condition. While you speak, you release that word. But more than that, you have to go back and find out. So what is the voice of God saying? What does it say? The voice of God, the logos of God, his thoughts, his intents. What does he say? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, 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 not just say, do all that is therein. It says, then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Good success. That means if I'm manifesting faith, then I must begin to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. Every time you are learning the laws of God, every time you're understanding the methodologies of the kingdom, you are in extension manifesting the law of faith. It's proof that you believe God. It's proof that you expect him to work. Are we together? Yes. The law of faith. You must believe in God. This life will come with so many things that will threaten you. When David stood before Goliath, he said, you come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, um, uh, the, 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 one, the, the one whom you have defied. He was speaking to Goliath. You have to stand and look at life and say you may look like a mountain but faith deflates mountains it is true it is true time will fail me he says to talk of gideon jephthah barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions listen let me tell you the truth there is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun it takes faith to subdue. Say in the name of Jesus, Amen. by the faith of God at work in me, I subdue every mountain. Don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely. No, no, no. There is nothing special about challenges. 
it is defeat that should be a surprise don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it and let the god of heaven who is not a man that should lie come and prove himself in your life every testimony here is faith the equation of faith completed trust in god please don't doubt god i know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on god we make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two one plus one plus god is any answer he says it should be any answer by what standard will you say he failed if a house is my own i can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance it's my house so you don't say because i entered here yes this is my house you are a visitor anywhere i show you that the door is you follow there kai this god god can decide to say 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together this is god for you 10 years in one hallelujah the law of faith let's run faith is very important we have dealt with the law of faith here we have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective christian life the law of value Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, the Bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before great men. This is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie. Sincerely, let me tell you, this is one of the, I, I, I can't use the word, truest scriptures. But this scripture you see, please have a lot of regard for it. The gift of a man truly can make room for him. He didn't say we'll show him where his room is until then there is no space for you the gift will make room for you like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space and because of your honor for that visitor the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room so where there was no space for you that your gift can come and say what is going on here the table of greatness where is my space sorry there's no space no it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne the gift of a man the gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness it's very important classic um, story is the story of Joseph Genesis chapter 41 when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46 i don't want to go into it forgive me i'm rushing because we're just this is a revision series i'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom these are the truths we engage if you don't engage this you will fail i tell you sincerely they are not opinions they are not doctrinal perspectives when jesus came he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom it's, it's important that we understand the methodologies of God. It's not, the discourse, it's not an invention of one man. Please understand this. J Jeremiah 6, I believe, verse 16. Let's go there and then we'll return here. Jeremiah 6, 16. The Bible says to ask for the ancient part. It says stand in the ways and see and ask for the old parts. Wherein is the good way? It says when you find it, walk therein. And ye shall find what? Rest. Another word for rest is Sabbath. The Sabbath of a man comes. The Bible says labor to enter your rest. That labor is not a labor in the flesh. It's a labor of understanding. 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 That there is a belief system. There is a construction. When you hold the keys of the kingdom, they can bring you in experience to your Sabbath. 
So two people, all saved by God, can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results. And the difference is not the love of God for them. For the same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is their understanding. Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, have I not said ye are gods? And all of you, not some of you, are children of the most high. Verse 7 says, but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So your destiny is not just left to God. How can I lie, Sharia? Whatever will be, will be. Those wise sayings are poisonous. Are we together? The law of value. Very, very powerful. You will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out to sit with kings. Your value decide who, decides who pursues you. It is true. And who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward. God designed life to operate based on a reward system. There's no sentiments to it. Life operates based on a reward system. That means that no matter how bad my background is, no matter how bad it was, there is a bailout system. I can be valuable. I can find my way out of every nonsense in life. It has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you. It's a principle backed up by God's own integrity. When you discover and you develop problem-solving abilities, when you become fruitful, when you become productive, it's impossible to be ignored. Regardless of tribal affiliation, regardless of sentiments, regardless of age and gender, the world does not have too many people who are valuable. Please understand this. Potentially, we all are. But in experience, there are few people per territory you can you can do a random sampling there are few people per territory who are really valuable so it's impossible to be ignored it's like holding bright, bright light in a very dark night how could you be ignored i show you what will take away mediocrity from your life it's impossible to be ignored you may ignore my background that's all right you may not like my persona that's all right but the value I carry, then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, is impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you. And I will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you there is more there is more than a weak and a mediocre life there is more than a life of just getting married having children and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life there is more than that there is a life of meaning and glory and beauty he has called us into glory and virtue he has called many sons into glory where your life becomes an influence for his majesty your life becomes an inspiration to a generation more than just food to eat more than a little house here and there I have one house, two cars, one estate, one business, a wife, my children, and that's it. That's a mediocre life. There's more than that. Are we together? The Bible says that you are the light of the world. Jesus is teaching here now. You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. He says, if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men. He says, you are the light of the world. Then he says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's the word. You cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability. And my brothers and my sisters, when the glory of God comes upon 
who you are and the works of your hands, your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder. One wonder connecting to another. When people think they have exhausted a dimension, here you come like the eagle. Another page. God does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity. No. It's a very poisonous proposition. He desires that all men, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, that we have all been made together unto our God, kings, or a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And he said, we, not one person, we shall reign on earth. Please believe the word of God. It's not a scam. Believe the word of God. It may take time. And while that is happening, different people can argue about what they think or know about your life. But just allow the word of God take you like a lift. It will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder. And all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. Now, thanks be to God, he says, that causes us always to triumph. Are we together? Yes. And Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so must you. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. Mm. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. Being an Igbo person gives you. Being a northerner gives you. Being a middle belt, a, south, a southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Otherwise, people like us would not have a stake in life. But hallelujah. Ah. You may laugh at my background, but watch my future. You may laugh at yesterday, but not tomorrow. Between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne. I will not remain at the cross. Jesus died for only three days. He didn't die forever. Man should not remain at the cross forever. If you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me but not the one with me. The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. It says, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when it comes. Let me give you the New Living Translation of that. There is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God. When God wanted to humble the fallen angels, he used clay to make man. You see, the fallen angels were not made from dust. Their material was light. 
And now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel. And they said, this is not fair. Even Lucifer that was a light bearer an effulgence of the light of God did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ. The Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel. Never came inside one cherubim. But he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Appa! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. You know, and this is a world of arrogance. Even one minute to a man falling inside a pit, he will act as if he still has control. Let me tell you, the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church. It will be impossible. The church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are, who are close within a religious sect. No, the social economy will see the intelligence of God. Was it not prophesied by prophet Micah that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will flow to it. They will come and say, come, let us go to the house of God, to the God of Jacob, for he will teach us his ways. It says, for from Zion, out of Zion shall proceed the law. Not into Zion, out of Zion. Say, I'm valuable. It's a revelation. Don't give yourself cheap to life. Just because culture, just because your past, just because your failures have concluded about you, shake that off and know that there is a way. Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Mm -mm. While they were discussing the death of Jesus, he had resurrected and was on the throne. Please sit down. The law of value. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. The earth has too many people for you to be ignored. 7.2 billion is a lot of people. A territory can ignore you but not the entire earth. we will all be great and the greatest part is we will all know ourselves it's true you will not be great just by intention there is a ladder that knowledge provides one step after another we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation it will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power. There are mysteries in the kingdom. These are the keys. Please understand this. Please understand this. The next key that I want to teach us is what I call, you know it, the mystery of exemption. Huh. That there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves. The first time we see exemption in scripture, officially, was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel. Are we together? And that when the angel of death saw the blood, he would pass over. That is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you. 
passing over is a possibility in this kingdom the bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side he said none shall come nigh thy dwelling but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked let me tell you the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you forget about your current result just focus on believing it Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember, the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities, your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied, but a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, What do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother, who said the head of John the Baptist and the head of John the Baptist went there are things that should not happen that you can make happen and there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening praise when you praise God it's called perfected praise praise that is intentional Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. It says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horse is and his rider. Not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horse is and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not, you find it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. Are we together? Yes. Praise. You exempt yourself through praise. 
You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice. Sacrifice is very powerful. Psalms 50 and verse 5. I'm just doing a quick recap. We have all these teachings. You can go and listen to them. Gather unto me, my saints, the Bible declares, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, by sacrifice, by sacrifice. There are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered. Sacrifice. The Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings and that night, not the next day, that same night, the Lord came to him and said, Solomon, ask what he will. And then he asked, not for the life of his enemy, but for wisdom to govern the people. And he said, you did not ask for the life of your enemy, nor riches, nor this. Because of that, I will give you an understanding heart, he said. And with it, I will give you riches, I will give you wealth and honor, and so on and so forth. Sacrifice is powerful. Unfortunately, I know that it has been abused, you know, especially by women of God try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money but just because something was was abused the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bathwater. sacrifice is powerful you can sow your way out of realms you can sow your way into realms sacrifice that is done with understanding not manipulation not coercion as a testimony one time when when we started koinonia i think the the first year or so we're just about a year or so i remember one time the beginning of that year the lord gave an instruction to carry everything literally everything zero dot zero zero carry everything and so and I heard it, I knew it was God. I said, Lord, thank you for an opportunity for lifting. Not thank you for being a robber. God does not rob. As we carried that seed and sowed in seven days, seven days, God did a miracle that is only in heaven we all know what God did. But it's a, it's a model of miracles to this ministry, even financially. Greed is your partnership with failure. When you are greedy, you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle. Please hear what I'm saying. This is true. Greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm. You can pray your way. You can give your way, sow your way, and then invoke the mercy of God and so on and so forth. Let me talk about two more and we'll pray. Oh dear. But I hope you are getting these things. Because let me tell you, if you understand these principles that I show you, your life will become an unending wonder. It's true. It's not a lie. They are not opinions. Hallelujah. The next law, spiritual law, the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. These are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately. The irrefutable ministry of destiny help us. Hmm. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. Please understand this. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. We are relational beings. In fact, the faith work starts with a relationship. A relationship with Jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth. 
relationships matter in this life please listen when you master relationships you will tame life like a dog i wish i had the time but let's look at just one scripture second samuel chapter 9 it's a long reading i don't know if we can look at it second samuel chapter 9 we'll start from verse 1 destiny help us there is there is a teaching and david said ah, i answer amen for this for even myself and david said is there yet any that is left in the house of saul that i may show him kindness for whose sake not for his sake for jonathan because you are related to jonathan i want to change your life next verse and there was in the house of one Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet hmm. is a son but he's a son that cannot help himself next verse and the king said unto him where is he and he said behold he's in laudeba and so on and so forth verse five let's hurry up i just want us to get the, the central message and the and the king david sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, and the son of amiel from laudeba six now when Mephibosheth, ah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he said, Behold thy servant, seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness, not the Spirit of God. Men can show men kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. Water, you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yeah, none like you. Water, you turn to say. Water, you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. We're talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater, my God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you. Sit down. I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No, it's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. 
the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9, we are reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, please listen. I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited, but in this kingdom there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Listen. And then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy. Every disadvantage, you don't take blemish before the king. Did you not read Malachi? You call me a king. Why do you bring me animals with blemish? The guy already called himself a dog. The king said, it doesn't matter. May you find the man anointed by God to lift you. Please hear what I'm saying. You can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching. Please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah. But there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check, but he knows how to connect you to someone who honors your vision. Divine connectors. Number two, the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access. These ones are people who have influence. They are gatekeepers of industries. Who's, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God, let me tell you this sincerely, please hear me. Not every enemy is castable. Just think about what I'm saying. 
there are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God. You cannot cast them. When God wants you to pass through that gate, he will make them to show you favor. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are gatekeepers. A Cyrus can reject you. He does not honor God, but you are rejected. How do you cast Caesar? How do you cast Herod? So he granted favor. And when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus, they allowed it. Not every man you can just pray and say, let him leave that place. Let me tell you, there are men that would not go there. Because their stewardship is a covenant. They are not even there because of what they did. They are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect. Although they are unbelievers. Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel. Because he will always remember Abraham. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth. In a desert land, yet they are prosperous. Because God is a covenant keeping God. So when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living, find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God. Forget that they are rebelling while they are there. Their children will pay for it. But for that time, no, your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor. And you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results. What I tell you is called spiritual intelligence. It's true. These are the kinds that you need favor, influence. Did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph? He just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph. Notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh, they were allowed to serve their God. And Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest, Potiphar, the priest of On, as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere. And he still gave him as a wife. And in, in the land of Goshen, the people, con it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. That was when their oppression started. So even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally, you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people Every father needs these people. They are the people that make work easy. They are the errands and the horse. You need gifted people. They must be sent by God. You will see a big church of 5,000 people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard. You need to cry for gifted people. Are we together? Gifted people. I have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of God but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a I mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people I'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer Lord send me gifted people make my life easy You have a business because of scarcity you you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life hello is this so so so, so person's office why are you here please if you are don't you know who gave you the address and person, i'm sorry and he leaves you are inside there doing ceo and your company is failing you need to pray for gifted people no man exists as an island gifted i pray this prayer all the time and I tell you sincerely and I, 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 I stand broken before God to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people. The workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people. Has saved me the stress of any other thing. I focus on the ministry of prayer and the word. Please, you need gifted people in your life. 
Otherwise, life will be hard. You can't do everything by yourself. Hallelujah. Gifted people. The day your wife is giving birth, that's the day the quack doctor is on duty. You, you see what is happening? The day your child is sick, that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection. And he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth. The midwife that threw Mephibosheth, she was called a midwife. What happened that she threw the guy down? Do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child? Lord, send me gifted people in the name of Jesus Christ. And the last of all, very quickly, they are called burden bearers. The last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers. During the, your down times in life, you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne. They love you because of who you are. The flat tree of success can kill. People can clap when there is a crown on your head. But when you are at the cross, you will need burden bearers. And Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, the Bible records. And he was, he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die. He would have died there. And if he died there, there would be a problem. Because he needed to die a curse. Not just to die a man. Cost is the man that hangs upon the tree, he says, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So if he died on the way, that's not redemption. That's obituary. And then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene, the black man, the nigger, and he, the guy gladly carried the cross. Let me tell you, I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David. They saw him hiding and they said, you will become our king. It's not everybody that is looking for results. There are people who will stay with you. As the landlord is driving you, they will stand there and say, no, I will not run away. Men are selfish by design. Please, every leader, hear me. You need to trust God for the grace for real burden bearers. Men and women who can cry with you. They can say, Hosanna, but when you're on your way to the cross, you will only see Mary and John there. Burden bearers. There are men of God when they are, we start building project, everybody just runs away. When the building is completed, people come and dance again to acknowledge God. Burden bearers. Even the disciples ran away. But there was a woman who said, let me risk my life. I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body. I hope you know that was why she went. She carried to go and purify his body. What if she died on the way? A burden bearer will be like Ruth. To Naomi, your God will be my God, and your people will be my people. Many people, when they are in their dark days, they never find helpers who will not celebrate with you when things are going well. But you must pray for burden bearers. There is an attack on the church, and someone is standing to say, Pastor, I love you, I will stand by you all the way. Are we together? I'm robber still from your house and someone comes and says is there food for the next two weeks i will be cooking for you don't tell anybody i have to stay here i hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that there are real burden bearers it takes prayer and spiritual understanding listen these are the forces that work in the life of others and while you are seeing these things happen, there are burden bearers. Again, I thank God for the privilege. You know, many men of God, for many men of God, their greatest fear, in fact, many successful people, their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad. I tell you, God has taken that fear out of my life. God has given me not only 
trusted people, not only gifted people. Not everybody, oh, but there are people God has put in my life that I know if they put a gun today, they will stand and take that bullet. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. Given me peace on the night There's no need to cry Cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything Listen, you must pray to God And cry that there be Burden bearers will look at your wound Listen, listen Please sit down, we'll pray shortly Listen the Bible talks, Jesus himself was teaching. And Jesus spoke about a man. And robbers were laid that man. Are we together? And he was on the, a priest came. And a priest saw him and left going to church. A Pharisee came and left him. But there was a man called Good Samaritan. No name. Good Samaritan. He was identified by where he was coming from, his territory, and his character. Good Samaritan. And the man sat down. He bandaged this man, took him to a private inn to keep him, and said, I will take care of him. I'm about to go and do something. When I come back, whatever the cost is, that's a burden bearer. That's not an advisor. There are people who will come and see your child your daughter, your son, and look at things, work and say, ah, what is this? You mean he has been writing Wayek for five years? I will conduct a personal tutorial. When you see a burden bearer, you will think they charm them. They will carry your own load on their own head. You are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer, you have entered the Sabbath. The person may not be a millionaire, he will be collecting 100,000 and depositing 60,000. Say, this is my contribution. There are real burden bearers. Not everyone on earth is wicked. You have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you. You select your possibilities in prayer. This ministry, by the grace of God, has been privileged to have burden bearers. Men and women who are raised by the Spirit financial burden bearers credibility burden bearers there are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but i've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if god did not call them themselves burden bearers It is painful to be alone. It is painful to be alone. There are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children. They had just five or six of their own children, but they raised up to 50 children of other people. And these people in old age will be in the hospital. Are we together now? Looking for one million for a treatment. And all those 40 people they raised, not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it a burden bearer will go all out to turn your cry into weeping. That's his assignment. To insist till you laugh. 
why are you about to go away so i'm in 200 level my father just died my mother just died they don't sit down and say are we from the same village that's not a burden bearer is your what was your father did he know my father mm. i stand and i say this come every semester receive this school fees for give me your account number I will be putting 10 10 thousand until you graduate and when you are about to graduate let me know so that i will ensure that you have a job now do you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife i want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting god because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers that's why they don't announce we have a project of you know god designed men to be burden bearers this crying on stage for money every week no a real burden bearer will sit down and find needs why is this pastor's shoe removing that shoe would the pastor would never wear that shoe again had this shoe no no it was embarrassing next time you go and buy ah, we noticed that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer may your wife be your burden bearer husband and may your husband, may, may, what's the next one now? May your husband be a burden bearer wife. Be, because, listen, let me tell you, if your spouse is not a burden bearer, you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital. You've seen these things happen. Some persons are in the hospital, some people are selling their property, hoping that they will die. And then they later come and leave. It's, it's when they are alive. They now find out that half of the estate had gone in expectation that you would die. Is that a spouse? This is why we will continue by the Spirit of God. Listen to me. Let me just digress for 10 seconds. This is why we will continue to guide people. You know, sometimes people make very, very poor marital choices carelessly. These are the things to think about father is this person a burden bearer not for now for the days that come there are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man he can't talk he can't walk yet she's laughing they say say something about your husband say even if we return in this life i want him to still be my husband that's a burden bearer my generation hear me open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life burden bearers in my life i have seen this there are men of god who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there i am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world and you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said look this and that and that and burden bearers the lord gave the word he said great is the company of them that published it if you don't have a burden bearer you will pay for everything the one who will help you drive your car you will pay the one who will help you cook, you will pay. The one who will help your child to not cry in church, you will pay. Because they are not burden bearers. Naomi told Ruth, you can go. I'm an old woman. Don't worry. At least my sons are dead. I can't leave you. Please just go. Live your life. Leave this old woman. And Ruth said, no way. No way. Mama, I'm not going anywhere. That means even if my future is ruined, let it be at the instance of our relationship your god will be my god your people will be my people our time is gone ah.
can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor will i end without teaching this as you are agreeing to give me five minutes it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me you will go home after the grace Making my, 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 this spiritual mystery second only to the law of encounter is the greatest truth I have found the law of honor the mystery behind the sudden rising of people like a charm a man just evaporates and you don't see him again and the only place you find him is above honor what is honor honor is the discerning please listen five minutes and we're done honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and then if need be honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man please help him out, for their uniqueness honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people please if you can i recommend that you listen to my teaching that i did at the king's court rccg the king's court listen to it i spoke on the book of esther the book of esther starts in a very interesting way please lend me five minutes we're still at that the bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man a king called ahasuerus the bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his his might and then the bible tells us about a woman called vashti are we together so the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman the king calls for vashti to come to come and you know show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends and vashti refused when she refused the king being a very good man he kept quiet with the issue but then the advisors of the king said uh, 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 uh. this woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman if you permit this dishonor our wives and our women will start the same thing too do something about it and vashti is banished are we together that means everything was in place in a palace the throne is still there the treasures are still there but dishonor is about to divide the kingdom into two everything still in place intelligence is there the security there her man is there but one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king. I apologize. No. To hell with your palace. And she leaves. Scene 3. A call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory. And then in a place called Shushan. Are we together now? The little niece of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king. honor 
she honored the man and she came honor and favor works peri pasu there may not be time to talk about favor but if you if you if you practice honor automatically you will find favor favor is the reward for honor are we together so when she came there the bible says in esther chapter 2 please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17 that there was a grace for favor that was upon her now when the turn of esther came and so on and so forth she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Favor is a grace that works with sight. When, when the grace for favor is upon you, only a blind man will ignore blessing you. Provided there is a man that has the eye that can see, they are compelled to bless you. Verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women she was not alone but the king loved Esther and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so other virgins obtained favor too but her surpassed them so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti are we together and then when you read on you will find out that a lot began to happen. And she declared a fast because of the threat of her man, his plot to destroy the people of God. And she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer, the scepter, and invited and said, what should I do? A wise woman, look at honor. Honor is a weapon. In, that, in the book of Esther, there is no priest. In the book of Esther, there is no prophet. In the book of Esther, there is no apostle. In the book of Esther, there is no war. There is only a woman. But she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor. She honored her man to his grave. Honor is a weapon. It not only lifts, it can kill. A wise, a foolish woman would have told the king, and said king her man wants to destroy us will you watch your beautiful bride go see that but a wise woman when he gave her an opportunity her honor she discerned his mood and she said oh king i want to give you what the first wife didn't give you it was her not honoring you that took her out of the place grant me the opportunity to present a banquet and the king said finally I find a woman who understands that with all humility, I am king over 127 provinces. Talk about my province first before my request. Don't, before your, don't come before me and request. Talk about the province. Don't ignore the achievement. It's a formula for attracting the attention of great men. Don't come before a great man and say, I'm broke. No. Are you not aware his company is doing well? You start like Esther. The province and the palace and his interest then your needs come later so when you go to this king called your father when you start it is hallowed be your name then thy kingdom come then your will O king be done on earth then when you are done then give us this day our daily it's a formula the king's interest first before your needs so Esther prepares a banquet and then notice she also requested please let her man also come when you fight a great man's friend too soon even if it's your enemy you will pay for it friendship is not built in one day you will not fight it emotionally her man had done many good things for the king for one woman's plea to make him destroy the man no she prepared the banquet the king liked it. He said, do it again. He said, with all pleasure, my king. Honor. Remember, somebody is dying, no. But honor is the one killing the person. And then another banquet is prepared. And then the Bible says, she prepared a feast called the Feast of Wine. That was where the whole thing came. The Feast of Wine. When the king drank wine, 
and was happy. He now said, okay, what is it? And he said, oh, king, I have a plea. Say it, wine. You wait until wine comes. There is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people. Who is that? That her man. Look at a wise king. He didn't comment. He stood up and went to his garden. Went around his lounge and was just thinking. And while he was thinking, you see, but when, when it's time up for your enemy, anything will be problem. The man went to the, key, the queen to kneel down. You know how you kneel down and just say, kill me here. The king now, ah! You are even trying to rape my wife on top. That's the end of it. Couldn't he beg from a distance? He now came and knelt down close to the queen. He, he's just doom. And listen, the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. Her man, didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. And that was the end of it. Her man is hung on that same gallow. Mordecai occupies her man's position. Esther occupies Vashti's position. So who said God cannot replace men? Who said God cannot lift? Please hear me. Honor is powerful. Dishonor is dangerous. There is only one reason why men fail in life. Carry this message. Dishonor to God. Dishonor to men. Dishonor to principles. One more time. Dishonor to God. Dishonor to men. And dishonor to principles. This is why people fail in life. Every time I have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister, I will never, never dishonor the man of God, dishonor their protocol, dishonor their system. I will walk within what is provided. It's called honor. It's not weakness. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. I tell you why many young people are dying like chickens. Dishonor. 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 The law of honor has changed my life. The law of honor has lifted me, lifted this great ministry. You can earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. When they say mention your streams of income, don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry say honor a wise man will clap for you honor is powerful it can change your life in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters honor is powerful i continue to walk this law like a chess and you walk this law, there is no power in existence. I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry. I truly love them and I honor them. We prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way, a token of honor. Honor is very powerful. Let me tell you this. When God makes men like you, no matter what is done a, within the context of that generation, you have entered your Sabbath. It is not enough for God to like you alone. The men he uses must like you. God can tell Pastor Femi, come Pastor Femi, I'm rounding up. God can tell Pastor Femi to bless me. He can reject that instruction. While he's struggling with obedience, I'm suffering. I will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed, but it will remain in the dream. God agreed, a man disagreed, I'm paying the price. And the key will be honor. Honor. Is what we continue to teach in this ministry. Please hear me. 
you are part of this spiritual family one of the signature traits of your life must be honor don't talk to people anyhow you see elderly people you insult everybody huh no an elderly woman is carrying something mark please can i help you oh i'm a man of god so what demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence don't dishonor our children you see my children here even if i'm not going to see anybody on the line i must see these children nobody fights these small children and have me laugh at them no i will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their cloth no problem if we don't honor them our future is dead honor is powerful you see a wealthy man and he said these people are just lucky all these people how can a young man if not uh, i hear your father was this and that is it dishonor is why many people are poor and broke they see every rich man and just think he was dash he was luck no every successful man especially a successful young man you know one time we were traveling somewhere and i sat close to someone and i was sleeping it was so bad you know this kind of sleep you are going like this all around because you are tired and then you know the person was trying to ah you're a young man what kind of sleep is this I just looked at him and I nodded my head. I said, you see, this is the kind of thing you are talking about. You are not asking why I'm seated where you are seated at my age. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, I don't mean to be sarcastic. I don't mean to be sarcastic. The first question is, how did you get here? Listen. Please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. And someone does not have a job. The person who does not have a job, you can honor your way. I've taught it commanding result. Listen to it. One day, get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job. Don't say it's my younger brother. It's my younger sister. It's my, when I was in, in, in SS, uh, um, SS3, he was saying, all those, all those superstitious, trado African approach to life. You, you, you will be punished again and again. I have a great deal of respect for people who honor me. Sincerely. If you, if you, if you trivialize what I represent, I will not fight you. But I will never prophesy to you. You will not be, you will not be close. You will not be around my life again. Because I'm going to waste my time. I don't love, I don't hate you. I will not do that. I will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old. No, I honor all men. Beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous to your growth. Not to flatter you. But please, if you have 127 provinces, it is not a bad thing to have a feast. O oh, Ahasuerus. 127 provinces is not a kiosk. Let us learn to practice honor. Some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents. Your father is a prof. Your mother is a prof. You are there sweeping the ground in life. You can say, Daddy, Mommy, please. Whatever I have done, whatever needs to come on my head how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare i'm telling you this there are parents who never went to school but they raised 10 children not one of them is an arm robber you think it's just there is a grace there one child is about to kill you go and meet them buy something they like and say please place something on my destiny when I was about to start ministry, I met my father and my mother. And I told them, I said, I told my mother, I said, you are a pastor's daughter. Your father was a pioneer. My grandfather was the first cooking president. The first cooking president. And is that pioneer grace I want? I knelt down. When you are too big to honor, you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor 
there are fathers of faith today that want to invite me and you know sometimes our precious fathers respectfully speaking they also don't know the schedule but i've helped the protocol to see just be open be open i will see how i will adjust anything that you stand and say I'm Apostle Joshua Selman and crash down honor is powerful you are the one who loses when you dishonor men we have to stop here teach your children to honor don't see a stranger and come and slap him you spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say I did not give birth to this in the name of Jesus Christ you must change you must become like your father pamper your child to have something some produce something that would destroy you there are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague they are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi a pastor femi sorry you see, already, even if he prays for you, I assure you, even if you fall down, you didn't get anything. Yes. Falling down has never been the requirement for reception. It is honor. The door you dishonor closes towards you. I never find a man that carries something I need and I will keep quiet with it. No. One day God will give you an opportunity to see how I honor the fathers. You will be surprised. It's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret. I had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room. I was granted the opportunity and the tour, and I said, please grant me the grace. I said, what is there? Every prayer room, what is it? Is it a shrine? You, you see this kind of thinking. You, every result has mysteries that support it. When I laid down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to David Yongicho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yongicho called him to come and pray for him. Ah. I made sure that I treated every staff there. The staff were the apostle, you are the apostle, pray for me. I said, no, I know that I will pray for you, but I came here to carry a grace. Oh no. The person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not, you may need but don't have. Are we together? Yes. The gentleman may not have money, but he has character. He's a grace and he's transferable. The person seated next to you, no matter what happens, there is a covenant of supplies. Quarter to shame, help must rise from somewhere. You think it's not an issue to honor? Some of our mothers and fathers seated here, the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives. They can just look at you and say, bless you and that's it. And many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it. We never rise, we never shine, and our light never comes. Please rise up on your feet. I apologize for taking our time. Hold hands with someone. I'm going to pray. These are the ways of the kingdom. Just one prayer and we are done tonight. I apologize, our time is up. I don't know which of these laws I have shared with you. I don't know which of these mysteries, please hear me. I don't know which of these spiritual mysteries you have compromised on. But it's time to cry to God. I have said, there are many of them. This is a revision. Just come hold him, please, help him so that he which of these mysteries that you need to know which one am i missing don't say things are not working in my life nothing works till you engage it there has to be something you are missing maybe it is dishonor maybe you are not putting your faith to work are we together maybe your mind 
you are trying to acquire things in your life that has not come by growth please whatever category lift up your voice in two minutes let's cry to god we came to church tonight church is a place of transformation the lord has declared by his spirit that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness my life is changing prophesy to yourself i'm rising by the spirit by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus One minute and we're done. Outside, pray. Online, please pray. The keys of the kingdom. The mysteries by which we reign. Enforce us of divine possibilities upon the life of a man. Hallelujah. Father, we desire to bear fruit. We love you and we want to attain unto that height, that image, that stature. We want to be a people very spiritual. We want to be a people very transformed. We want to not only be ambassadors of the kingdom, but we also seek to be agents of national transformation. That our lives will not be a nuisance to civilization. Our lives will not be a nuisance to any society. We want to be prosperous. We contend for kingdom influence. We want to walk in superior dimensions of the gift of the spirit. Quicken our understanding, oh God. You have brought us through this revision again to upgrade our lives to insist that we get what works i pray that you break every stony heart in the name of jesus christ give us a heart of flesh give us a heart that is compliant in the mighty name of jesus christ father we decree and declare that we meditate on these things we give ourselves wholly to them and we declare that our profiting will appear unto all everyone who has come under this grace and this influence tonight is blessed in the name of jesus we thank you we thank you and we bless you in jesus name i pray amen and amen now very quickly our time is up again i i sincerely apologize um you are here please listen i want to make the altar call in one minute you are here and Listening to me teach, the Holy Spirit began to speak to you about the need to completely surrender your heart to Jesus. You are here inside, outside, overflows, and online, whatever nation of the world. Or you are here, please let's minimize movement. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but at one point or the other, my life has gone haywire and I need restoration. Please, we have just one minute for you. If you're in that category, inside, outside, wherever, you will need to run if you have to come. Please, I'd like you to rush and come. Stand here. Let me have the honor of praying for you. And that from the depth of my heart. God bless you. Don't wait for anyone to come. Win that war tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. They are coming everywhere from inside and from outside. God is giving you a new beginning. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Celebrate those who are coming from outside. This is a family. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's like coming to receive an award. You are not coming to a funeral. Jesus is calling you. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them, please, quickly. I'm not sure. I just know that I love the things of God. 
but I cannot remember making a commitment for Jesus. Please join them quickly. We have a few seconds. If you're coming from outside, please rush. You're coming from outside, please rush. Whoever comes to him, the Bible declares that he will in no way wise cast away. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I honor every one of you for um, the courage to come. It takes a lot of courage. Aside from the convicting power of the spirit, it also, there is a psychology to it. It takes a lot of courage. I salute you for winning this war. Please lift your right hand if you will. And I want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart. You're not just reciting a poem. Jesus is here. If you want to join them, please come quickly while they pray. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe in you that you are the son of God. Tonight, I receive your life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I am saved. I move upward and I move forward only. Please keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you. I stretch my hands over these ones and I present to you the ones you died for. It's an honor to lead these precious people you have so loved before your throne and to present them to you. I pray that the grace that keeps will keep you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the Spirit of the Lord that your sins are forgiven. The Lord gives you a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ, you go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekato. Katebranda Katapakotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.